Today we are rebuilding a carburetor for what kind of a tractor? It's an International 460. International 460. With a 221 engine in it, 200 cubic ton engine. We have all of our tools laid out and our parts uh, from the new carburetor. There's the new carburetor kit. And would you like to explain what some of these parts are? Just kind of go through them. This is well. This is the bottom half of the carburetor. This is the top half that we put the float and the needle valve and seat in. That's about all. Well, yeah, are they in there already? No, I'm going to put them in right now. This is a new needle valve and seat. That's about the first thing you put in on this top side. How tight you tighten that? Pretty tight, so it won't leak. If it if it leaks around the gasket, your carburetor is going to flood, flood over. So you want it tight so it won't leak around the gasket, around the little gasket. And you put this in there. This, oh. is, the, this is the needle valve. Got the little rubber tip on it. Okay. Goes in there. Now, this is the float. It's right there. We got a new float axle. Oh, there's an up and down to this float. Okay. That's down. So that's uh, where you adjust the, the, the down part of it, the drop. Don't want to put it on upside down. No, don't put it on upside down. Floats typically go bad sometimes in carburetors and you got to replace them. The new ones you buy a lot of times are plastic. The old ones like these are brass. I forgot a pair of pliers. I need to squeeze that uh, post there so that float won't come out. Needle float needle. Yeah, well, needle any, nose pliers. Anything. Okay. We need to squeeze this float post together so that the uh, axle won't come out. Well, it'll still come out a little bit. Still too loose. So we'll, uh, we'll squeeze it together just a little bit. Pretty much gravity holds that in there. Once you put the other housing on, it won't be able to come apart, will it? Uh, no. No, because it would, ain't room for that. Well, that's still kind of loose. That's too loose for me. Did you do this for an occupation when you were working? Were you a tractor person when you were working? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, kind of. He was a machinist for okay, three-build injector pumps. Okay. And everything else, too, but mostly that was his specialty. Okay, yeah. In Denver, Colorado. Oh, wow. Did you go skiing a lot? Do I? No, no. No, I didn't go skiing. But he did go four wheeling a lot. He had a jeep. Yeah, uh, we went four wheeling a lot on them mountain trails. Well, maybe I've done too much there, but that's all right. We'll we'll try to get that in there. Stubborn one. I'm having a little bit of trouble here.
Didn't I bring a bigger screwdriver over here against your head, did I? Need a regular? Yeah, I need a regular. <coughs> Hmm. You try to put that through there? Well, I need a bigger screwdriver. We're going to open that slot up a little bit. There we go. I just had a wrong screwdriver. Now, it says here for the double float, it's one and five sixteenths drop or float level. And I think I done made. And that's on the instructions that come with it. Mm -hmm. it said it said one and five sixteenth float drop. Yeah. Gives you a little schematic of how to do that. Float level. One and five sixteenths there. How am I going to do that? They give you this little. They give you this little measuring machine too. <laughs> I never, because I don't know how to use that one. <laughs> you you figure it out there and tell me. Well, there's one inch. One and five sixteenths. Okay, that's. Uh, there's. There's one inch. There's sixteenths right four, there. Four. Five sixteenths right there. Okay, I got it. One, two, three, four, five. Right there. There's one and five sixteenths. Now, I put that on there. You put it on there like this. Make sure your thing is level. And you're putting it against the bottom of this right here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It looks like this side needs to come up a little bit. Just bend it by hand, don't you? Yeah. See, because that side is. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and all we got to do is bend it up just a little bit. Still needs to come up, don't it? Now, I bet we got her now. That may be too much. Yeah. Now, one thing you don't want to do, you don't want to, if you need to go down, don't press against that needle valve. Get it up, get it up off of that needle valve. That's the one thing you don't want to do when you go to, if you go to press them down. Now we got it. I can tell. Yeah, see. We got that level. We got that, we got that, we got that. <coughs> Okay, now the float drop is 1 and 15 sixteenths. That's how far it'll drop down. And you measure from the same distance? Yeah. 15 sixteenths, almost 2 inches, isn't it? Okay. So that means when your carburetor is empty and the gas is out of the bowl, mm -hmm. this is called the bowl. Four, eight, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That lets that open and that lets that needle valve open and lets fuel go into the bowl. It's dropping too far. So how do you adjust the drop? Right here. Right here, and we've already got that thing in there. This this little old tab right here. 
tab on the back. See, it won't let it, a little tab right there, mm -hmm. won't let it drop very far. Now, let's see what I've done. Have I done anything? Well, still a little bit much, ain't it? Did you help it some? Yeah. Yeah, I helped it some. But see, when I turn loose, it drops a little bit. <coughs> That'll be all right. That'll be all right. That's in within a sixteenth of an inch. Now, here's the Ventura. You know what the Ventura does? No. What's the Ventura do? Well, see, one opening is smaller than the center. Mm-hmm. It acts like a spray. When the engine sucks the gas up out of this bowl, it got more or less vaporizes it as it comes through there. That's the main important part of a carburetor. Is it just set in there? Yeah. It just sits in there. Maybe I'm, yeah. Goes like that. <coughs> See, the big the big part is bigger than the goes in there like that. And this gasket whoo, ooh, here. See how far that quote is that mm -hmm. away from the center? They need to be Now, I have went too far, and this float will hit the sides of the carburetor of the bowl, mm -hmm. and it won't work up and down. And this gasket goes right there. Right like that. Only we need to, we need to turn it over, I think. Cause them holes don't line up the best. Turn it over. Now, got them. Okay. That's that's ready to go. That one. <laughs> now this one. What do they call this thing? I don't know. They call that the idle jet. The idle jet? Idle jet. Okay. And if you're uh, if you're good enough you can see that see that it's open. <laughs> the way okay. I do see it. See through it. <laughs> yeah, I can see through it. Or if you can't see through it, you can use yeah. one, one of these one of the pipe cleaners and open it up. It goes right there. And don't get too stout with it because you can twist it off. Good and snug. Okay. Good and snug. Now, we'll put this in here. This is a, I guess you call this a metering jet or something. It's got the little holes in it that picks up the gas. Well, here, when you put this in here, let's put this in here. See, this is tapered. Mm -hmm. What's that called? main jet or the load jet load jet load jet and it controls the amount of gas that's going in uh, to this part here okay now before you screw this in if you guys can see it that well you probably can't see it but anyway That copper, little copper thing that's sticking out in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Okay, little copper thing in the bottom. That's that's called a main jet. Mm -hmm. And 